Welcome again to Game of Theories, where I introduce theories of management, administration, and leadership. This is episode thirty-three. Today, we'll explore Frederick Herzberg's two-factor theory, which states that there are certain factors in the workplace that cause job satisfaction, while a separate set of factors cause dissatisfaction, all of which act independently of each other. It's a theory that provoked an intense debate around the motivation to work since its birth in 1959. When the book was published, Herzberg was only 36 years old. This game-changing piece had sent shockwaves through the world of management discourse, shattering the age-old belief that money is the ultimate motivator. In this video, we'll unravel the layers of history that provide the backdrop for this groundbreaking theory. We'll dive into the heart of its radical departure from conventional wisdom. We'll also explore its limitations and the untapped potential it still offers. Visualize a continuum with factors like working conditions, vacation time, learning opportunities, chances of promotion. Report with bosses, recognition, wage levels, and the balance between effort and reward scattered along its path. Each factor assigned different weight, duration, and impact by each individual could tip the balance, creating the state of satisfaction or dissatisfaction at any given moment. And yes, even a neutral state could exist where the positives. Precisely offset the negatives. Now picture the world when the motivation to work was published. Frederick Taylor's ideas ruled supreme, encapsulated in the notion of scientific management. Taylorism was about meticulously analyzing work design and content, measuring performance, and tying reward to performance with piece rate systems. Piece rate systems refer to a method of compensation where employees are paid based on the number of units they produce or the tasks they complete. Instead of receiving a fixed salary or hourly wage, workers were incentivized to be more productive by earning a certain amount for each piece they produce or task they accomplish. This system is often used in industries where output can be easily quantified, such as manufacturing or assembling lines. Imagine the uproar when Herzberg suggested that the bond between motivation and reward might not be as straightforward as previously thought. This bold assertion sent shockwaves through academia and industry. Challenging the deeply entrenched interests, another influential figure emerged on the scene: Henry Ford, the mastermind behind efficiency. Ford sought to revolutionize the workforce, aiming to transform workers into highly productive machines from the moment they set foot in his factories. His pioneering assembly line production. Became the marvel of the 20th century, unleashing unprecedented levels of mass production and ushering an era of prosperity. However, this newfound wealth and productivity came at a steep price. The daily reality for workers was an endless cycle of mind-numbing tasks, monotonous and repetitious, long shifts spanning over eight hours, six days a week. Forced workers to rotate through morning, evening, and even night shifts for up to 50 weeks a year. Dignity and mental stimulation became scarce commodities in this grueling environment, giving rise to high rates of absenteeism, diminished productivity, and even acts of sabotage. The consequences of Taylorist and Fordist approach were dire, casting a shadow over the very workers who drove the wheels of progress. Amidst this backdrop, Herzberg emerged as a proponent of work enrichment, advocating for a shift from extrinsic rewards to intrinsic satisfaction. He believed that 
Organizations should focus on creating fulfilling work experiences by incorporating task variety, autonomy, and opportunities for judgment and responsibility. This entails entrusting employees with some of the planning and evaluating duties typically reserved for managers. This groundbreaking approach came to be known as orthodox job enrichment. Let's step into the world of Herzberg's two-factor theory, where job satisfaction and dissatisfaction were unraveled through a captivating experiment. Picture this: researchers delve into the impact of 14 factors, analyzing its frequency and duration on individuals' motivation to work. Through interviews and critical incident analysis, respondents were transported back to the moments linked to each factor, revealing its profound influence. As the data unfolded, it became clear that the results were divided into two distinct categories, each with its own tale to tell. First, there were the sources of satisfaction, where the essence of work itself came alive. Accompanied by a sense of accomplishment and recognition from supervisors and colleagues, the promise of a promotion and the chance to take on more responsibility added to this motivational symphony. These elements were dubbed motivators, igniting an internal fire within individuals. On the other hand, a different narrative emerged when it came to dissatisfaction. External factors such as company policies and administration cast shadows of discontent. Poor technical or interpersonal supervision, inadequate working conditions, and inappropriate financial rewards all contributed to this disheartening chorus. These external elements, labeled as hygiene factors, seemed to sap motivation or, at best, Limit its potential, even if well conceived. This is why the two-factor theory is also known as motivation hygiene theory. The term hygiene is employed to depict maintenance factors within Herzberg's theory. These factors are external to the work itself and encompass aspects such as company policies, supervisory practices, and wage and salary. Herzberg humorously referred to hygiene factors as KITA factors, which stands for "kick in the ass." This phrase alludes to the use of incentives or the threat of punishments to compel someone to take action. Herzberg's observation on hygiene factors also sheds light on the dynamics of workplace satisfaction. He noted that. A negative work environment could cause dissatisfaction, but a positive environment alone rarely led to satisfaction. He emphasized the importance of preventing dissatisfaction alongside fostering motivation through job satisfaction. Furthermore, he recognized that hygiene factors operated independently over motivation factors. Meaning, employees could be highly motivated in their work while remaining dissatisfied with their work environment. With their findings in hand, Herzberg and his team categorized these sources of satisfaction and dissatisfaction. Motivators bursting with internal energy stood in stark contrast to the hygiene factors. Which served as external stimuli that either coerced compliance or compelled movement in the desired direction set by the management. The term "two-factor theory" actually refers to Herzberg's conceptualization of two distinct categories of factors that influence job satisfaction and dissatisfaction. These categories are motivators. Factors that contribute to job satisfaction and hygiene factors, factors that, when absent or inadequate, lead to job satisfaction. So, while there are indeed fourteen factors being studied in Herzberg's research, they are classified into two overarching categories within the two-factor theory.
So how do we diminish dissatisfaction? Herzberg suggests some crucial moves: paying reasonable wages, ensuring job security, and fostering a positive culture are among the powerful steps to take. These factors play a vital role in creating a harmonious work environment where employees can thrive. But wait, there is more. Job satisfaction, which is the other half of the equation, calls for an entirely different approach. It's about igniting motivation within employees, unlocking their full potential. Motivating factors take center stage here. They are the secret sauce that fuels higher performance and sparks enthusiasm. Herzberg even classified our actions based on their underlying motivations. If we act out of necessity, it's just movement. But when our action stems from genuine passion and desire, that's when true motivation kicks in. Here is the intriguing part. Herzberg believed that it was crucial to address job dissatisfaction before diving into the quest for satisfaction. It's like laying a solid foundation before constructing a magnificent building. By eliminating sources of dissatisfaction, we clear the path for true fulfillment and engagement. The ripple effects of employee satisfaction are astounding. When employees freely share their knowledge, they satisfy their social needs and forge strong bonds within their group. But it doesn't end there. Knowledge sharing sparks motivation and growth. It's a beautiful cycle where employee satisfaction fuels the organization's innovative endeavors. Fostering a culture of continuous improvement. In this dynamic theory, we encounter four possible combinations, each with its own story to tell. High hygiene plus high motivation. This is the golden scenario where employees are not only motivated but also have minimal complaints. It's like hitting the jackpot of job satisfaction. High hygiene plus Low motivation. With this combination, employees may have few complaints, but that fiery motivation is missing in action. The job becomes more of a paycheck than a source of inspiration. Low hygiene plus high motivation. Now we are in exciting territory. Employees are motivated, passionate, and ready to conquer the world. However, there are lingering complaints about inadequate salaries or working conditions casting a shadow over the experience. Low hygiene plus low motivation. Brace yourself for the worst-case scenario: employees lack motivation and complaints run rampant. It's a toxic blend that stifles both productivity and morale. Unlike Abraham Maslow's theory. Which relied heavily on abstract concepts. Herzberg's two-factor theory stands firm with substantial empirical evidence. However, it's not immune to criticism. As Herzberg's groundbreaking article reached the public, a wave of unease washed over the academic community. Replication studies sought to validate Herzberg's methodology, with some providing consistent findings that mirrored the original results. However, alternative approaches failed to deliver the same level of consistency, casting doubt on the reliability and the validity of Herzberg's pioneering work. Introducing Victor Rome, a formidable critic who dove into the depths of methodology. In my earlier video, we explored expectancy theory, which was the brainchild of Victor Rome himself. Rome challenged the very essence of research techniques, suggesting that any method involving recall could potentially trigger ego defense mechanisms, leading respondents to align motivators. With their personal achievements, while attributing dissatisfaction to factors beyond their control, as the academic discourse unfolded, other scholars joined the conversation, 
shedding light on the impact of poor respondent recall on Herzberg's results. These invoices raise important concerns about the accuracy and reliability of the findings, questioning the foundation upon which Herzberg's theory was built. Amidst the debate, a puzzling revelation emerged that left researchers scratching their heads. It challenged the conventional wisdom surrounding money as a motivator. Typically regarded as a driving force, it now took on a new role as a potential dissatisfactor, a hygiene factor that failed to ignite the expected flames of motivation. Over the years, Herzberg faced persistent challenges and criticism, prompting him to confront his critics head on. In 1968, about 10 years after proposing his groundbreaking theory, he unleashed his magnum opus, One More Time, How Do You Motivate Employees? The article quickly became a sensation surpassing all expectations as it sold over 1.2 million reprints, a staggering achievement that set a record for the Harvard Business Review. Inspired by the overwhelming success of his seminal article, Herzberg and his dedicated collaborators embarked on a journey of further exploration and refinement. Their subsequent publications, such as Job Enrichment Pays Off, Orthodox Job Enrichment, Measuring True Quality in Job Satisfaction, The Managerial Choice to Be Efficient and to Be Human, and the New Perspectives in the Will to Work, solidified their status as influential voices in the realm of organizational theory. This journey of Herzberg and his team not only shattered prevailing notions of motivation, but also ignited a fervent quest for more fulfilling and empowering work environment. Their ideas penetrated the very fabric of organizational practices, sparking a revolution that would forever change the way businesses approached employee engagement and satisfaction. Herzberg's legacy became a guiding light, inspiring countless individuals and organizations to strive for excellence in creating workplaces that nurture and motivate their workforce. Thanks for watching this video on the two factor theory. If you are interested in learning more about theories of management, administration, and leadership, be sure to tune in to my future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you want to know more about how to build a theoretical framework for your research, check out my book titled Demystify Theories, a workbook for developing theoretical frameworks of educational leadership research. The link of the book is in the description below.